coming back to Cardinal, it felt both, I, I could, it felt fresher, which to me, um, but also bloodier. I think hmm. this, this one seemed a little more splatter. <laughs> Uh, was it? I don't know. Um, uh, I never quite, I mean, when I'm done, I'm already working on the next book, of course. Um, so, I mean, usually, correct me if I'm wrong, but usually in my books th there is horrific violence, but usually it doesn't occur on screen. I don't describe it as it happens. I mean, they may find the, uh, the body afterwards and it, what happened is implied, or you may be at the autopsy and hear what was done in the past, or they hear a tape of it or something like this. Usually uh, several degrees of removal from the actual thing. So while it is about horrific crimes, usually they're not described firsthand. Uh, and I don't think I did that in this book. It was a more violent end to a cardinal novel than I remember, or am I just if that's I true. sanitized It was more you? of a, no, that's true, um, that's true. And, what, and I, I hope actually a, a more exciting end, because I actually had the ending in mind before I started writing anything. I knew, I knew how it was, not who was gonna shoot who or anything like that, but I knew what the end situation was going to be and who was going to be in trouble and how that was going to work. Um, so uh, I hope that that I hope that that works. Um, it, it was more um, more th thriller near the end than yeah. than mystery. We kind of knew who was doing it, but then oh yeah, but then cardinals st stuck in stuff and yeah, that, uh, that's usually the case with my books that you know who did it um, fairly early on, like by page. 150 or so. Um, I think only one of them you don't know till till later, because that's where the you know uh, it, it's a thriller, and that's where the suspense comes from is knowing who the bad person is and what they're planning to do. So, how would you like to describe? Have you got a, a, a quick way of describing the plot for this one, and, and how much of the ghastly beginning do you like to give away? Um, well, this one's a hard one to describe because it has uh, several plots going on, but um, th it, it revolves around the fur industry in, in the north to some extent. Um, there's an annual fur auction in Algonquin Bay, and um, two Russian Americans who are in town for the auction are murdered. Um, they, their decapitated bodies are found. And um, that takes Cardinal and Delorme into the fur business, but it turns out to be more complicated than that. Uh, at the same time, there's another story involving the crime machine of the title, who is a, a man who runs a kind of, uh, almost a school for murderers, I guess would be the quick way of describing it. And um, that was one of the most interesting things for me, was to work out the dynamics of that group of people, young people, and an, uh, an older man who calls himself Papa, who is intent on mayhem, basically. I came to think of him as uh, Charles Manson without the loving fun side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I'm joking about it with you because he's just such a horrible character. There's no other way of really dealing with. He is, and and but uh, so I mean, the challenge for me was how that. I mean, the first question when you think, oh, a guy runs a group of people like that. Well, why would they stay with him? And the reason is because he's very, very good. I mean, he's not just just evil. He's a very attractive character in lots of ways. I mean, he, he gets people to do stuff for him that they wouldn't dream of doing, and they like doing it for him because he is, cause he's so good at he's so charismatic. Delorme is still there, and he's still there, mm -hmm. and there's still something between them, mm -hmm. and they still haven't got it together. No. How much longer can you play this before my mother and one, one other, of other them, readers one of them dies. Start, start <laughs> going, just to say, the, the credit, you, you, you've just stretched it too far. There's no way that these yeah. people could possibly be sitting on a couch night after night watching movies together, eating popcorn, and not figuring out that they're a couple. I, that's true. That's very true. And um, that's, that's another issue I'll have to resolve, figure out what to do with in this. Uh, that, I mean, that's the, one of the fun things, about, perhaps the most fun thing about writing a series is having these characters and relationships develop over such a long period of time. Um, but you're abs you and your mother are absolutely right. There's a limit to how long you can draw anything out in the course of one book, in terms of the plot of one book, but also in terms of the, um, you know, the storylines uh, with ongoing characters. I mean, you run into that TV series, run into it all the time. You know, they're making vast amounts of money, so they keep the series going. But you think, how many brain tumors can these people have? How many malpractice suits? You know, so you, there is a limit to how <laughs> much you can draw it out, and 
maybe it's t maybe it is time for a cardinal and Delorme to get it together. Um, we'll just have to see. So you're working on another cardinal. Mm -hmm. And what else? Because I know you. You've probably got something else going on. Yeah, I've got a bunch of them going. Um, um, I'm working on a cardinal, and I'm working on another crime novel that is not a cardinal. And I'm working on something entirely unrelated to to crime, and it's probably ridiculous, and I probably, <laughs> probably won't finish it, but I like to have a bunch of stuff going at once. The book is Crime Machine. It's the latest John Cardinal mystery and Giles Blunt's Crime Machine, published by Random House of Canada.